I begin with uh, the greetings of peace, the ancient greetings of the prophets and the patriarchs of God from the very beginning of humanity, spoken in various languages and dialects. I speak to, him to you initially in Arabic, Salam Alaikum, which is peace be unto you. Uh, it is a pleasure and an honor to be in this institution of higher learning. We'll give the brothers just a second. Just a minute. It should be all right now, is it? Yes, please. After the greetings of peace, it's uh, a pleasure to be with uh, you in this institution of higher learning. I know there's always a little bit of rivalry. I know Warwick University rates. I, okay, we'll, we'll leave that. We won't, you know, climb the charts anyway. Uh, but I wouldn't go to speak in Oxford. I thought I'd come here. <laughs> we have an important uh, discussion. It's actually my first talk in the UK. I've just arrived from Australia yesterday. So I left Perth 40 degrees Celsius. I'm here today, eight, nine degrees Celsius, but I'm Canadian, so it's all right. I'll make do. Uh, there's some initial feed, uh, you know, feedback that I will want from you a little bit later. Uh, and I kind of assess how well I've done in my discussion by the questions that you have. Uh, so I'm hoping that there will be some questions intelligent or not, it's up to you. You can choose which ones you want to put out. But all questions and all comments that you have will be taken. Uh, and I would appre your, appreciate your honesty and your diligence in that. So feel free to fire away any questions that you have. If we don't have time, you're more than welcome to email me. I'll provide my email or my business card to anyone who has an honest interest in following up with me. Uh, I'm actually a chaplain at Curtin University in Perth, so I do a lot of meetings with people your age. And I kind of think of myself as, you know, not that far off your age. I'm only 32, so, you know, I don't know how young you are in UK universities. Uh, our discussions today will be wide-ranging. I want to give you an authentic feel for what Muslims for those of you who are not Muslim in the audience, or those who will listen to it later, or for the message you deliver to your friends after, I want, I want you to have a little bit of an authentic feel. And it's important for us as Muslims, those of you in the audience, to know our texts, to know what the Quran says, to know what Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, and all the other prophets has said, with regards to that famous, great, sanctified, honorable, noble, lofty, personality of Isa, Jesus, peace and blessings be upon him. So I will deliver as much of my discussion as proper in Arabic. I will quote the Arabic verses from the Quran because it gives that level of authenticity. It's something that you may not be privy to or hear for those of you who are not Muslim. And for those of you who are Muslim, to hear it in Arabic and then translate it for you in English is actually quite powerful as well because it's not an opportunity that you receive as often as necessary. Before we really speak about Isa, about Jesus, we need to speak about his mother. Allah, which is the word in Arabic for God, and it's really a simple translation. Allah, when you open the Bible, my friend, a Coptic Christian, he opens his Bible, he looks in the book of Genesis, instead of reading God in Arabic, it says Allah, right? It's only Arabic for God. So, for, for Christian Arabic speaking people, that's the same word that you and I, that they would use in discussing or in referencing the ultimate authority, the maker, the fashioner of all that exists. Allah says to us in the Quran that in Allah has tafa Adam wa Nuhan wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Imran ala al God chose from amongst all of the creation of humanity Adam. Noah, Nuh, Al Imran, the family of Imran, and the family of Abraham from amongst all of humanity. A progeny that would come one after another, lineages that would come from these four elemental sources that will be a blessing unto all humanity. 
And all of the prophets, all of the patriarchs, all of the messengers that God has sent emerge from there. That great initial father of humanity, Adam, that reviver of the tradition of faith, Noah, the first messenger unto mankind after the corruption, and then the families of Imran and the family of Ibrahim. Tomorrow I have a talk in London about the prophet Abraham. Maybe you'll get a chance to take a look at it on the website for the student union, the Islamic Student Union, if obviously you're not able to attend. From what I understand, they will be put back on, and that's why they're recording them. From the family of Imran, there was one famous initial personality, and it happens to be a woman. Out of that chosen family, God chose a woman, Maryam. Her mother is quoted in the Quran as making an invocation, a supplication, a prayer unto God, saying, Inni wahabtu laka ma fi batni muharrara. Whatever child I'm carrying in my stomach, I give unto your service completely. Fataqabbal minni, my dear Lord, accept this child that I carry at this moment in service to you. Innaka anta samir alim, for you are the one who has heard my prayer and you know the truth of what I said. When she gave birth to a female child, at that time Judaism, to a certain extent, was a closed religious community to females. A female at that time was unable to attend the temple. She was unable to hold the Torah. She had certain restrictions that were put against her that her mother, Maryam's mother, knew immediately, just by her daughter being born, that she would not be given the full opportunity to serve the Lord in the way that she had intended in her invocation. She had a sense of disappointment. And a male and a female are not held in our society as equals. But I will give her the title and the name of Maryam, Mary. Now, the 19th chapter in the Quran is actually named after Maryam. That's how important she is in the legacy of Islam. She's so important that Allah chronicles her life. That when the people, the Jews, they saw that this child was a gift from God unto them, the Jews immediately recognized that the people living at that time saw that she was a great inspiration unto humanity. But she was a woman. So who's going to nurture her spiritual development? Who's going to give her an opportunity to learn the Torah, to learn to teach others? Who's going to give her that avenue? Takafalaha Zakariya, the great prophet of God, Zakariya, as is quoted in the third chapter of the Quran. You can turn to it later, whether online or if you have a copy, starting from about verse number 26 onwards. Zakariya, he competed with other peers to be her main instructor, teacher. 